that has been in 29 minutes. <laughs> Put that in at 11. That's at 25 wraps on the new Limitless rod. As you can see, lovely spring day. We've come over to, uh, to Boddington to put this, the new limitless rod through its pace or paces. And this is the, this is the extreme version. This is the 14 foot for the eight ounce tip. And we're better to come and test it at the home of sort of distance match fishing really, Boddington Reservoir. <laughs> the only, uh, the only downside to fishing <laughs> so far out is it takes quite a while to, to get the fish anywhere near the bank. So before the session started, I um, I re-spooled. I spooled it up with six pound. We're on a, we're on a match venue. It's uh, it's still, I think it's 026 the six pound. So it's it's still not really thin, ultra thin. But it just casts so much easier. And to take the brunt of that cast, I put a sh shot leader on, and that is the 10 pound barbel main line. T is always worth checking as well, that your venue allows shot leaders, not everywhere does. It's fished completely safe. We're fishing the, uh, the method bolt beads. So it gives a little bit of resistance when the fish pick the method up, but then it's completely free running and, and the diameter of the uh, the insert just passes over that shot, shot leader and with, it's barbless only rule. So it's all completely safe. Beautiful. Right, you join us today at Boddington Reservoir where we're testing the new limitless rods going through our sort of tips and, and anything I'm looking for in a rod to fish at distance. We're not fishing ridiculously far, but 25 wraps on sort of heavy duty match tackle is still a, a real good chuck. So I'm gonna run you through some sort of tips and tricks and what I'm looking for in the tackle. And hopefully put a few more of these on the bank. Right then, I'm going to run through the, uh, the hardware that I'm using and having the right tools for the job is paramount for sort of any sort of fishing, but let alone distance fishing. If your tackle isn't capable of putting you where you need to be, then you just, you're, you're, you're a loser from the off. Starting with the reel, it's got a real, I'm using the Zelos distance and it's got a really large spool so that I'm not getting any sort of drag off the line. I'm using a lighter main line, so I'm, I've got a six pound mono with a shock leader. I've got a long rod. Give me more leverage to get it out. It's 14 foot this. There is, a, there is gonna be a 13 foot in, in the range as well. Um, it's got anti-frap eyes. Again, aiding less friction of the line passing through. They're large diameters, the eyes, all the way through to the tip as well, because there's no point having a large diameter butt ring and then a, a tiny little tip ring because your line's still gonna choke up on the cast. This one's, uh, I had a little look short. I've put a bit of bait in a bit shorter because I've seen quite a few fish show a bit shorter and no signs and uh, first chuck back at 25 wraps it's gone round. Another good point you've seen probably a lot of other anglers here timing your casts it's uh, not one of them venues especially this time of year where you, you sort of keep ringing the dinner bell and they come definitely worth being patient and uh, and almost setting a trap with the, with the feeder. You're um, it's almost like solid bag fishing with with the method. You're just chucking it out to the ranges and and, and waiting for one to come along. Really. Yeah. 
another Boddington Common at range. I, uh, as I said, I just tried, I've put a bit of bait in at 70 metres and uh, I'd had an hour over the bait. I had one liner, but no signs. First truck back at 25 wraps, 100 yards. And it's gone straight round. Just showing that some days, going that extra bit of distance definitely buys you more bite. Wicked, let's get it back without getting soaked. Something else that I find is really important is having a selection of feeders. I have got everything from 20 gram right up to 60 gram. I've got me, I've utilised my tackle blocks and um, as you can see, it's a windy day. I'm okay here, I've got the wind off my back. But say if you were fishing on the opposite bank and you, you've got this wind in your face, if the fish are there, you're gonna wanna fish there. So having a selection, using a, a, a bigger feeder in the wind will not only punch you out better against the wind, but if it's a crosswind and you're fishing to a clip, that heavier feeder will help take the bow out the line as the feeder hits the water. So you, you've got a better contact with your feeder, basically. You're not having a big bow in the toe in the, on the leg. Definitely worth having. Also, size-wise, larger feeders. If they're really having it, step your feeder up, get some more bait in. And that is the beauty of the, the quick change. So it's literally just a stem. Stem's on the line. You thread your line through the back of the feeder, click it into place, and you can just switch and change as you like. Wicked. End tackle, I've got a six, six mil band and wafter, a size 14 barbless all round a hook. And then the important part for me, the new bolt beads are fantastic. So they push into the method, with, so there's just enough resistance there to pick the weight of the feeder up, and then they pop away, making the, the rig safe and hard to get rid of, because it literally pricks the fish, picks the weight of the feeder, and then you're free running. Wicked. Great little, uh, great little bead they are. That one's over the bait. 18 wraps, that one. So, this is the first fish I've caught at the sh on the shorter spot. I've put a little bit of bait in at 70 yards. So 18, well, just over 70 yards. 18 wraps. And I keep dropping short onto it to have a look if there's any fish there. And I've seen a couple show a little bit closer again. It's always worth watching the water, isn't it? So I've dropped back over the bait. And first first cast on it, the rod's gone round. Lovely. We'll have a picture of that one. A slight issue now because I want a picture of that one in the net. And not only that, I unclipped it because I, I knew I was going to come and do pictures. Mirror as well, mirror, mirror on the wall. Normally they're nuts. The commons have fought much harder today. It's the second mirror, and the other mirror came in pretty easy. Yeah. 
beautiful. Double bubble. So another little tip there, as you can see, there's, there's two in that net. We're obviously getting feeding spells. So while I'll, I just unclip the rig, instead of unhooking the fish, cast the rod straight back out to the clip, trying to maximise bite time, and literally I'm settling the line, it's gone straight back round. So they've, they've come to that bit of bait that I've put in. They've, uh, it seems like they've just come over a little bit of bait. So I've got two lines, one at 18 wraps and one at 25. So up until this point, everything had been on the 25 wraps. We've just seen a couple of fish show closer. And uh, so I've chucked short. And as you can see, two in two chucks. I'm gonna get them back, see if we can get some more. So by far the biggest of today, and that's the first one on the, uh, on the shorter spot that came over the bait. Gotta love a common. Best looking one today as well. Wicked. See if we can go get some more. we're chucking so far as well and crashing it in and it's in deep water and just making sure that that feeder is properly loaded on i'm not getting i'm leaving it in for quite a while anyway so i'm getting a, enough breakdown time and it's never coming back with any on but i just want to make sure that it's always always getting down there important when you're going at sort of distance you see a lot of people with the feeder or i do way too close to the, the rod tip sort of you, you you're just not compressing your rod as as well as it can be on a sort of 12 foot rod they say a starting point is midway down the blank so you sort of you're looking at five probably a, a four to five foot drop something like that would be a good starting point for myself especially on a longer rod this is a 14 foot rod and you want to make sure you get a full arc so as far as you can go behind you, so I'm putting my hand behind, and then I'm gonna feel the feeder down, so I've touched it, so I know I'm, I've got as much of an arc as I can. And I'm gonna pull my left hand down quick and punch with the right. And as a, just a standing cast, that was 100 yards. I absolutely nailed the clip, clip then. And there's a, when you've got a big crosswind like this, it's worth just taking that little bit of extra time. If you pull too hard to take the bow out and, and trying to sink the line, you're going to end up moving your feeder. So just dip the tip, just tension it with your hand. You sort of feel the tension so it never gets too tight. And you're never going to move that feeder. So this is another one on that shorter mark. Just feeling my way into sort of the session because it is early spring. The weather is a bit savage. So we started off, I've put a bit of bait in at that 18 wrap mark. And then I've just timed the casts at the distance mark, nicking the odd fish. Kept looking over the bait, but nothing really happening until now and then I've had this, this is three and three chucks over the bait. So they might just be coming and having a little bit of a go now, hopefully. This is fish number six, so fingers crossed. I have been chopping and changing with my hook baits, but it hasn't really made a difference. I've had, this will be three on, three on meat and three on the wafter. She's a lively one. <laughs> So the hook baits I've used today, um, 
one of my go-tos is made. I've always, I've al always go with some punch, mate. It's caught me so many fish in the past. There's one slight issue with it. It can squash if, if I'm compacting the hook bait in the mould. It can squash off the hair. But wafters catch fish. They're just every matchman and specimen anglers now. They just, they just catch fish. They're so easy to use. Six mil if they're if you're scaling it down. Ten mil band and wafters. And I'll just give them a little little treat. Boost them up with a bit of haze. Really does work. As you can see, I've, I've chopped and changed all day and at the minute I've had three on the mates and three on the wafters, so no, no preferences there. Then we go to hook baits. It's funny, isn't it, when they come? I mean, how long's that been in, Todd? 30 seconds. Yeah. Another, uh, another quick tip, <laughs> you may have just seen that. that fish just took me straight to the clip. The beauty of wrap, the distance sticks, wrapping on and off, is you have a, every now and again you'll have a fish that does this, that just charges off. You can just unclip. I've got the distance sticks ready there. There's no drama, just don't panic. Pop the clip off. And then, uh, and then wrap them back up. And hopefully you get the fish in. Should have netted that really. Boom. Continuously eating that clip at range has built that swim up and they've uh, they've decided to come on the feed now. I, I, obviously the time of the day plays a big part. I mean we're getting into bite time now. But this is uh this is number Number eight, I think. And um, they've been a really good average today as well. I'm really surprised. It's been quite a few years since I fished Boddington and um, they've certainly grown. It'd be nice to finish on a 20, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'll get that tire, that rain. Look at it driving across lovely spring conditions. It's not the warmest today either, is it? Get in the net. I'm trying to net you without losing the other one. Whee! That's the last fish. She wants to go home as they've turned up. Wicked. Right, that's the end of a, of a really nice day. I've enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed coming back to Boddington. And uh, the average fish has certainly got bigger than the last time I was here. Um, I think that's number, something like number eight, but all caught at distance and that limitless rod and the, the, the Zelos distance has definitely made it, made it better for, or easier to hit the mark. So hopefully you've liked, and, uh, you've liked it and um, took some useful tips.